In this video, we're going to talk about how to decode a MIPS instruction. Now, what decode actually means is take the hexadecimal, the 32-bit instruction, and figure out what the operands are and figure out what the actual instruction is. So essentially, we are the CPU at this point saying, okay, you've instructed us to do something. Let's figure out what that is. So let's take an example and then see how we're going to go about this. So what I've got on your screen is the MIPS uh, volume 2 alpha and table A.2 is essentially what we're going to look at. In this case, we look at the opcode first. The opcode is the first discriminator for the CPU to understand which instruction is being asked. So let's take an example, and I'll just pull one up here that I've already done. So the example that I've got here is 0x3949082. Okay, so in this case, you can see that on the left-hand side over here, our opcode needs to be broken up into binary. And what we're looking for is the first six digits. So if we think about three, three is 0011, nine is 1001. And so what we're looking for is the first six digits. Once again, that's called the opcode. So the first three digits of the six, so the leftmost three digits, is going to give us our row, and the next three digits is going to give us our column. So let's take a look what we've got here. So I'm going to break this up into threes. So 001, so we're on row one right here. And then the next three is 110. So 110 is column six right here. So we see where those two meet, and we can see that it's the X or I instruction. So let's take a look at this instruction. So let me clear the screen just so it's easier to see. And now that we know that it's an X or I instruction, we can go back to the table of contents and look at the X or I instruction. Because now we have all 32 bits and we can determine what those 32 bits are going to tell the CPU to do. So scrolling back up, let's look for the XOR I instruction. And we can see that it is the very last instruction down here, page 447. Okay, so why don't we take a look at this instruction. Now we can see that the XOR I instruction has the opcode 001110. So let's go and redraw what our instruction is, 0x3949-0082. Okay, so I'm going to convert this into binary. That way there we can get R, S, R, T, and then the immediate. So X or I is the X or with an immediate value. So our destination is R, T. So this is our destination. R, S is the source register. So that's our source. And then this is the immediate. So notice that it's a 16-bit immediate. So let's take a look at the description to make sure we have everything uh, that we want here. <clears throat> so it says combine the contents of the general purpose register R, S, and the 16-bit zero extended immediate, okay? So this immediate is not a signed value. It's an unsigned value because it's zero extended. In a bitwise logical exclusive or operation. As you can see, that's essentially what's happening here is we're going to take the immediate and the source register, XOR them together, and store the result into RT. So let's take a look. Let's go ahead and convert this one into binary. So three is 0011, nine is 1001, four is 0100. 9, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 is 1, 0, 0, 0, and 2 is 0, 0, 1, 0, okay? So now what we're looking for is bits 25 through 21. So we're going to skip the six bits that we've already used for our opcode. Let me choose a different color here so it's easy to see. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bits. So those six bits are your opcode, Okay? The next five bits are going to be your RS, your source register. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's RS, that's our source register. The next five are going to be RT, which is the destination register. One, two, three, four, five. This is RT. And then the remaining 16 bits are going to be the immediate. Okay, so let's figure out the immediate first, and then we'll figure out the rest of them. So in this case, we have our ones place, twos place, fours place, eights. 16, 32, 64, 128. So in this case, we have 128 plus 2, which gives our immediate 130. Okay, so remember that's zero extended. The register that we have is a 32-bit register, but we have a 16-bit immediate. So that 16-bit immediate will grow to 32 bits by using zero extension. Okay, so now what we need to do is figure out what RS and RT are. So we know that our instruction is going to be X or I. And then we know that our immediate is going to be 130. So now what we're looking for is what is RS, what is RT. 
Well, our S is 8 plus 2, which is going to be dollar sign 10. And then remember, we're going to have to look up what these are, actually are. Our T is going to be 8 plus 1, which is dollar sign 9. Okay, so the two that we have here are 9 and 10. If we look at our chart, 9 is T1, 10 is T2. So this is T1. So our T, which is our destination register, is T1. And 10 is T2. So we put T2 in here. If you don't remember those, you can look at the table in the lecture notes to see that 10 is T1, uh, T2 and 9 is T1. So now that we're done, we can see that the X or I instruction is what we've ex executed. How do we do that? Number one, we looked at the op code. Remember, it's the first six bits. And you can see here that this X or I actually describes, or the first six bits describes the X or I instruction. So now let's take a look at an example where we have a special opcode of all zeros. In that case, if our opcode is all zeros, it's called the special opcode. And we actually have to look at table A3 to see what that's going to be. So let's do an example, and it's going to be 0x00842020. Okay? So whenever we look at this, remember we're looking at the leftmost six bits. So we use we convert the first two hex digits into binary, which is going to give me all zeros. Now we look at that, we see it's all zeros, which leads us into this special opcode right here. So let's take a look at the special opcode. We know that if we have a special opcode, we have to go to table A.3. So let's go to table A3 and see if we can figure out what's going on here. So table A3 luckily is at the very next table. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we need to look at the rightmost bits. So you can see this is called the function, and it's for the special opcode encoding. So in this case, the columns is going to be bits 2, 1, and 0. So those are the rightmost three bits. And then the next rightmost three bits are going to be 5, 4, and 3, and that's going to describe our row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rightmost bits here. So 2 is 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay? So now what I need to do is I need to grab six bits, and that will be our function. Okay, now we have a sub-opcode in this case that says, hey, We've narrowed it down that this is a special function, but we want to see what the sub opcode is going to be. So we go 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So there we go. So this is our row. This is our column. So our column is going to be 0, 0, 0. Our row is going to be 1, 0, 0. And we can see that this give us, gives us the add instruction. Okay? So now we can go over to the table of contents and find the add instruction and then decode the rest of the instruction. So here's our table of contents. We're looking for add, which should be at the top. Sometimes it's hard to scroll through here, as you can see. There we go. And now we have the add function on page 33. Okay, so this is what we've got here. So you can see that they've actually encoded here the special opcode 000, and then the add opcode, which is 100000. So let's go ahead and redraw our number and see if we can decode RS, RT, RD. Okay? So remember our number is going to be 0x00842020. Okay? So now we know we'd convert this at first into binary. So that's going to be 0000000. 8 is 1000. 4 is 0100. 2 is 0100000000000000. Okay? So now what we need to do is break this up into the fields that this diagram is showing us. So for the first six bits, that's going to be our opcode. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? The next five bits is going to be our left-hand source register called RS. So zero, zero, one, zero, zero, okay? So if you look at that, that's actually the value four, okay? And then the next five bits is going to be RT, which is this, the right-hand source register. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the next 5 bits is going to be RD, which is the destination register. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. It tells us that the next 5 bits must be 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then our, our opcode, the add opcode, is going to be, or the sub opcode, is going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay? So we know that the RS, which is this register right here, left source, is going to be number four. We'll convert them a little bit later, okay? In this case, our RT is also number four, and our destination register is also number four. So luckily for us, all these have the same value. Now, four might sound familiar to you because we use that a lot. In fact, it's A0. 
So we know that this is going to be the add instruction. We take RD, which is the rightmost, which is this one right here, and that's going to be A0. So that's our destination. Then we take RS, which is this one right here, that's going to be A0. And then finally we take RT, which is the rightmost. You can see right here it says RT is the rightmost, and that's going to also be A0. So that's how we decode if we have a sub opcode. So now let's take a look at an example where we have a branch instruction. So in a branch instruction, remember that it's PC relative. It means it's relative to the program counter and that it's relative to the branch or the instruction that's after the branch. So let's, let me give you an example here, which is going to be 0x1443FFFB. Okay, so once again, what we're looking for is the opcode, which is the leftmost six bits. So one is going to decode into 0, 0, 0, 1. Four is 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so then what we do is we take six bits. So that's 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. So here's the six bits we're going to take. The leftmost six bits is the row, so our row is going to be 0. The next six, the next, I'm sorry, ne the left three bits is going to be 0. That's our row. The next three bits, 1, 0, 1, is going to be our column. Okay, so whenever we look at that, we know that it's going to be a branch not equal instruction. So now what we have to do is go back up to the table of contents and find the branch not equal instruction. Okay, we can see there's the branch not equal instruction and now we can redraw our number. So our number once again is going to be 0x1443FFFB. Okay, so we know the offset is 16 bits. 16 bits is also four hex digits, so we know our offset is over here. Now, looking at the FFFB, we look at it and we can see that it is, in fact, a signed offset. We know that it's going to be an 18-bit signed offset, but the actual instruction stores 16 bits. So before the computer actually reads our instruction, it will take the immediate, this offset, and left shift it two places. That's how we get an 18-bit offset using this. Okay? So now what we need to do is we need to decode RSRT and then the offset. So first thing I'm going to do is kind of convert this to binary. So 1 is 0, 0, 0, 1. 4 is 0, 1, 0, 0. 3 is 0, 0, 1, 1. F is all 1s. And B is, it's 11, so that's 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay? So that's what we're looking for whenever we do that. So now what we need to do is find out what RS is, find out what RT is, and then decode the offset. So I'm going to skip the first six bits because that's our opcode. The next five bits is going to be RS. That's the leftmost register, as you can see here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay? And then the next five bits is going to be RT. That's the right-hand operand register that we're going to compare. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? And then before I get to the offset, let's go ahead and convert these and see what that is. So this is going to be 2, and this is going to be 3. If you look back in the table, 2 is V0. So we know this is going to be branch, not equals. So we look here. RS is the leftmost one. 2 is going to be V0. 3, right here, that's RT, is going to be V1. And now what we're looking for is the offset. Now, the CPU, there is no way to recover the label because that's not stored inside the instruction. We know that the offset is in here, so we want to see the byte displacement. Remember, this is a signed offset, so it can be positive or negative. So remember, to determine for signedness, we look at the most significant bit. So this is a 16-bit offset, so we're going to look at bit index 15, which in this case is a 1. So we know that it's going to be a negative number, so I'm going to draw my negative here, and to get the magnitude of it, we're going to take the 2's complement. Remember, 2's complement is flip all the bits, add 1. So this is going to go to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Then we add 1 to that, that gives us 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay? And then what we're going to do is, remember, we have to shift this value left two places. Now, if you remember how to do that, we just add two zeros to the right and then remove it. Okay? Another way you can do that is just multiply whatever value you have by four. Okay? So in this case, we have our ones place, our twos place, our fours place, eights, and sixteens place. So in this case, we have 16 plus two. No, 16 plus four. There we go. Which is minus 20. Okay? So in that case, that is a multiple four. If it's not a multiple four, you know you did something wrong. So that's, that's how you, you figure that one out. Okay? 
So it's 16 plus 4 gives us minus 20. So in this case, we're going to jump up 20 bits, or 20 bytes, my mistake. We're going to jump up. So remember, if it's negative, we move backwards in the program. We move up. And if it's positive, we move down. So the branch not equal is going to compare the V0, V1, and move backwards by 20 bytes if that is true. So that's how you decode normal instructions, instructions with a special opcode, and then branch instructions. Thanks for watching.